So the first step is to select all of these nodes and then collapse it into a subnet. And we do that by clicking this little box right here in the upper right hand corner of the uh, network editor. So I'm going to click that and you can see that this all becomes one node. And if we zoom in on that, it's just called subnet one and it has four inputs. Um, now, if we double click inside, you can see that um, we have our four inputs that are coming in. So if we wanted to wire anything into this node, we could wire that in and its functionality could spread through the node out to the end. Um, but you can see also down here that it has an output node and this is designating that this, whatever signal is coming out of the bottom of couch and in, into this output zero right here is what's going to be transmitted out of this output on this subnet right here. Now this subnet is where we can start building our parameter interface where we're going to be, you know, putting all the important parameters in one spot so that we can easily modify our couch. Um, but in order to do that, we've got to edit this parameter interface. So the way we do that is clicking this gear icon in the uh, parameters view right here. So I got the subnet selected and I've got these labels right here, which we don't really need right now. Um, and then I've got this gear icon. I'm going to click the gear icon and say edit parameter interface. And this little thingy pops up. So the first thing that we can do is let's just hide all those inputs. I don't want to look at those right now. So I'm going to shift select this list of inputs and click invisible and then hit apply. You can see that they all kind of disappear from the interface right now. And then what we can do is we can actually start building um, an interface out of any old type of float, slider, integer number, strings. We can tie different operators together. But one of the easiest ways to link parameters together is to just j dive inside the network and start grabbing things that you like and dragging and dropping them in here. So things that we'd want for example, would be maybe the um, the grid size. So we grab this grid size here and drop that on there. Uh, we grab the grid, the grid center and put it on there. And then we'd want maybe the poly extrude distance. This would be the distance for the base, the height of the base. And we drag that in there. And then over here, we would want, you know, for this example, this is the, the poly extrude. If I drag that, that's changing uh, how thick the back is. Um, I'm just going to disable this subdivide right here because it's going to kind of bog things down a little bit at the moment. But um, if I grab this parameter right here and drag it in, you can see that we've got all this going on. If we jump back up to our subnet and click apply, you can see that it started to build this interface out for us right here. And we can start controlling these things on the top level of this node, which is really cool. One of the problems, though, is that just grabbing parameters that we like, we can run into situations like this, where we've used two poly extrudes and we're using the same parameter name on each node. So it has, we have this descriptor here that says distance, and then we have another one that's called distance. So we can actually go here and change the way that these are labeled. So this first distance, I believe, is the one that controls the uh, base height. So we can actually just rename that by adjusting this label parameter right here. So in this edit parameter, interface window. I'm just going to call this the uh, base height and then I'll hit enter and then I'll hit apply and you can see that I've changed that label here on this parameter. Same down here. I'm going to just change this distance to become the uh, back thickness. So back thickness like so and hit apply. And so that there we're starting to actually build out and um, give meaningful interface to our couch subnet. So let's build this out the rest of the way. I'm going to dive back in here and start grabbing more things that I think we're going to want. I think that we'll want to be able to adjust this distance. Um, this is the arm thickness, like so. So we can grab this distance and drag it in here, and we'll call this arm thickness. And then I think also what we're going to want to do is be able to adjust the back height. And this is the arm height. So we can grab these transforms and and put them in there as well. So let's grab the back one first and we'll grab this back translate and drop it in here and we'll call this back height. And we'll grab this one and uh, drag it in here and we'll call this arm height. I think also we'll want to be able to control the beveling amount uh, that we have going on. So like the roundness of the arms and stuff like that. So let's grab this distance parameter for off of our bevel and drop it in here. We'll call this uh, bevel distance. Overall bevel distance, hit enter. And also I think we're going to want to get some stuff from our cushions. So let's look at this first poly extrude is adjusting our 
seat cushion thickness. So let's grab this distance and put it in here and call this seat cushion distance. And this one over here is the back cushion distance. You can just adjust the back cushion distance as well. So let's just grab that one and drop it in here. I called this other one the seat cushion distance. I'm going to call it the seat cushion thickness. And I think we could also maybe control the subdivision depth. We could control how many subdivisions we're giving it and also the uh, crease weight. And we can maybe tie these two together. So uh, let's just grab this depth and drag it over here. And this is going to be cushion subdivision depth. And hit enter. And then we'll also do the cushion subdivision crease weight. So this is going to be uh, the cushion crease weight. And then if we hit apply and accept right now, and we jump up here and look at our subnet, we can see that we're able to adjust the subdivision and the creasing on the base cushions themselves. Uh, but we haven't done it for the back cushions. And I'd like to tie this together to have just one slider to kind of control both of them by using a relative reference. We briefly touched on relative references here when we were making the grid. We actually are referencing the size of our grid to determine how many columns it's going to be divided into. We can do the same thing here, but instead of referencing another parameter on the same node that you're already on, you can reference a parameter from another node on, onto your current node. So here, if we select the subdivide and we click on depth here, this depth is actually a relative reference to the interface that we just created up on the subnet. So we can actually right click and copy this parameter and jump over here to the subdivide three and right click paste relative references. And now this subdivision depth is going to be tied to the subdivision depth on this node, which is being tied to the subdivision depth that we're defining on top of the subnet. So we can do the same thing here for the crease weight. We're going to say copy parameter and jump over to this uh, crease weight and paste its relative reference in here. So now when we jump up to the top of our subnet and adjust the crease weight and subdivision depth, you can see that we're doing that on both the seat cushions and the back cushions at the same time, which is kind of cool. Other things that I think we're going to want to be able to control are the shapes of our, our feet here. So let's um, dive into our subnet here and go and uh, promote some parameters for this as well. Actually, I got to jump up here and open up the edit parameter interface on the subnet. And then I'm going to dive inside and start grabbing stuff from our tubes and uh, whatnot. So under the tube, I'd say I want to get the uh, maybe the rotation of the tube. Let's get that in there. I also want to get the radius of the tube, the radius scale, the height, rows and columns. And if I hit apply and then we jump up here, you can see that we've got all of these uh, controls here. We can actually control the rotation of all of our legs at this level. We can adjust the um, radius of the top, the radius at the bottom, and the uh, overall radius scale of the entire uh, tube, the height of the legs. They look kind of pointy right now. Let's just change this back to maybe a value of 0 0.3, 0 0.03. And uh, we can also control like the roundness, the rows and columns. You can make these more round if we want, all these things. Let's set the rotation back to um, where we had it before, which is 45. I'm just going to set the height back to a smaller value, like maybe 0.1. Yeah, let's try 0.1. And I'll set my rows and columns back to uh, 4. So we got our nice little square, stumpy couch feet here. So now that we kind of have most of our parameters out here on, on our subnet, we can start to kind of organize them a little bit because this is just kind of cluttered right now. We could create a uh, folder here, you know, so I've gotten my list on the left-hand side of folder. I could just drag one of those over here and maybe this folder will be for adjusting the back. And so I can just grab everything that's associated with the back, like the back thickness and the back height. And I can just drop those in here and hit apply. And you can see that it throws those parameters down into this little tab down here where we're adjusting the uh, back. Now, if I continue doing this, say I'll do one for the arms, let's grab a folder and put it over here and we'll grab the arm thickness and the arm height and throw it into this folder and rename this folder arms and hit apply. You can see that it's organizing these into tabs. Now I can switch between the back and the arms in terms of like 
tab like relationship. Now, if I wanted to, I could still have these all display on the same page using these folders by just switching the folder type that we're using. So I'm going to click the back folder and the arms folder. And from this drop down, I'm going to just uh, select simple and then hit apply. And you see that it actually brings them out of this tab mode and they're more serving as labels or dividers. So let's create another folder for the legs. I'm just going to throw this down here. We're going to sit, set it to simple and then we're going to call the label. We're going to put legs in there or is it feet feet? We're going to do, we're going to call them feet. And then I'm going to, let's see, we've got the, I think it was this, we had the rotation all the way down to columns. I'm going to grab the rotation radius, radius, scale, height, rows, columns, drop, drop those into feet. And then let's get uh, some controls for our cushions. I'm going to grab another folder and call this cushions and grab the cushion thickness and back cushion thickness, seat cushion thickness, cushion subdivision depth and cushion crease weight and put that in here. Um, and maybe I'll put the cushions folder above the feet folder and turn it into a simple folder as well. So all four are simple folders. I'll hit apply. And then you can see that this interface looks a lot more organized. At least we can tell what we're doing now a little bit better. I've kind of left these overall ones where we're adjusting kind of the base height and overall bevel distance and the size and center of our object up here. And then all the other like individual parts are kind of organized down here. 